I just hope we don't take a quarterback early. That's my hope. We would maybe be the one team that trades back twice. Marvin Harrison Jr. is, is really enticing here as well. You know, you can make the argument for a quarterback, but I think a bigger argument is you got to take Marvin Harrison Jr. However, I just told you, you can find wide receivers everywhere in this draft. Like, is he truly going to be that difference maker at that position? And is he really worth it? And, you know, it's kind of interesting because we talk about the defensive tackle being a need. Well, it was also a need last year. But what did Ryan Poles do? He did not take Jalen Carter. He actually traded back one more spot. And he did not address the interior of the line. He even addressed the exterior with the right tackle because he felt that that was probably a better player at that position. Listen, there might have been a chance that Jalen Carter would not have survived this roller coaster. <laughs> I mean, it, it does take some mentally tough. I know all three of us have PTSD and have been scarred by this team. So are the players. Like, you got to be mentally tough to sit here and go through what they're going through. I mean, we feel it as fans that they're out there doing it. I remember a quote from Ryan Post saying, hey, we can't afford to take risks on character issues because our locker room just isn't there yet. Well, I think I think this team has showed you that they've actually stuck together through the crap, and I think moving forward, that's a different story. I think you might have a stronger locker room now, and maybe this year you can't afford to maybe take a shot on some – someone out there, even if they have character concerns. If you feel that the window on this team may be starting to creak open because the defense is playing really good, then why would you sit there and try and gamble on the most impactful position when you're all you're trying to do is develop some type of consistency? I've been very clear on how I feel about taking a quarterback early. Um, it almost never works out. And even when they're not the first overall pick, any guy that's taken you know first in the draft, even like recent memories, Kenny Pickett, in a weak class, you know, it got, it does kind of differentiate itself as like an, an incredibly risky thing to do. And um, again, if you're talking about value, you're talking about what you can get out of the draft. Like, yeah, for sure. We've, st we've gone through this Paul and just looked at every decent to above average defensive tackle in the last 10 to 20 years, defensive end. You got to take these guys early. You got to take them often. And then every other position, even at this point, you could argue that the quarterback position, there's almost never the first or second guy taken that's good in the NFL right now. In terms of your value position and where you, who you take and where you take them, I think that hopefully is something that Ryan Poles is not letting the emotion of the situation break his brain from deviating from because he's been consistent about that. He is an offensive lineman. He knows what offensive linemen are, are and then he knows what defensive linemen are probably second best because he's played against them. So. Hopefully this um, this emotional field situation isn't going to you know mess with his head and t make him do the the typical thing. When I think right now probably the best way to build your team is to be a little bit atypical and just make it deeper and stronger in the trenches. In the draft, I think I would try and trade back that first. I know I'm going to trade the first pick back because there's no sense in, in setting us back years with drafting a quarterback in the first position. But I, I think I would go for a wide receiver and then I'd try and get like Jared Verse or Chop Robinson because I ought to be able to trade back, like you said, twice and do that and pick up a second round pick to use on it and start start building that interior offensive line again. But then if I'm polls, when somebody comes to me for this first pick, I'm going to ask you guys. You guys are general managers of the team. So what are you going to give me for Caleb Williams or Drake May or Marvison Harrison Jr.? Or Justin Fields, what are you going to give me? Well, oh, I think what you're willing to pay and what you get out of that payment is a really important part of that question, right? Is because yeah. what every team is willing to pay right now, if you go back to the Patrick Mahomes draft, he was taken seventh, I think. From the first time he played it against the Bears where he scored a touchdown, and then he went because he was taken 10th overall. Yeah. Everybody would have traded up to one overall and traded their next five first overall picks for right? Like probably Patrick Mahomes when you know what you're dealing with. And right now it's it's an assumption game because you thought you were getting something with Mitch Trubisky. You thought you were getting something with Deshaun Watson and even Deshaun Watson, a guy who pays off. Like a lot of these guys aren't panning out because they're hurt. Trevor Lawrence has the same statistics through 41 games as Daniel Jones. So what you're willing to pay is, is everything. So like if Caleb Williams was guaranteed to be Patrick Mahomes, and that's one of the most ridiculous comparisons. It's like, like, this is Kobe Bryant. This is Michael Jordan. Like, 
who drafts a guy thinking that you're going to get that? That's insane. Even if Caleb Williams like lives up to like a hundred percent of his potential, if you have a guy that's eighty percent of Patrick Mahomes, like you're still stoked on that pick. It it matters about how in love with the guy you are versus the guy you already have, where your team is and what like where they're at as a team and where you're in your building stage, and so what you're willing to pay is pretty much everything. If you're asking me to answer that directly, Foster, like like literally. This year, you're probably getting three first-round picks to start talking in that conversation. 